I am so excited because today I am interviewing a virtual pop star. Her name is Paula and she is gathering millions of fans online and in the metaverse. Paula was created by Soul Publishing. So following on from my interview with Paula, I'm joined by Patrick Wilkins, the Soul's VP of Operations, to explore the future of digital artists, virtual influencers, and the future of music in the metaverse. So let's speak to Paula. But as she is a virtual pop star, it's only fitting that she is interviewed by my hyper real virtual avatar. So I'm passing over to my virtual me. This is me as my avatar, and I am really excited to be interviewing Paula. For anyone who hasn't listened to your music yet, and perhaps doesn't know who you are, can you introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Hi, Bernard. Uh, it's not always easy for me to talk about myself, but I'll try. My name is Polar, and I live in the digital world. I would describe my life in three letters. M, V, G. M for music, V for video, and G for games. <laughs> I love music, especially creating it. Mm, you can check out my songs right now on Spotify or any other music platform. Um, I also like to dance and make my own videos on TikTok and on YouTube. Honestly, I'm just like any other girl who loves to sing, dance and perform. As a virtual pop star existing primarily in the digital space, what is it like interacting with your human fans? Thank you, Bernard, for your question. So my fans are also my friends and they really understand me. I love receiving their reactions to my videos and their personal messages really motivate me. To get even closer to my human fans, I recently created my own Trendsetters Dance Club. People can become members of my YouTube community where we have great fun together. I am releasing all of my new dance routine tutorials there one week in advance so we can learn them together and members can be the first to perform them with me. It's so cool! <laughs> okay, so concerts in the digital world are another great way for us to connect. I had an amazing time at this summer's Avakin Life in-game Solar Sounds Festival. What is the best thing about performing in the metaverse? Oh, the Solar Sounds Festival was a great example of this, where I had more than 2.2 million player visits to my performances. It was incredible to headline the festival as it was also a place where I could sing, dance and be with my fans in the form of their metaverse avatars. I would love to give as many concerts in as many games as possible in the future. Mm, the best thing about performing in the metaverse is being on the same side of the screen with my audience and spending this exciting time together. <laughs> During the Solar Sound Festival, players could dress their avatars to look like me, so sometimes it was like 10 ballers dancing together. <laughs> also, can you imagine 2 million fans? It's like 10 gigantic football stadiums full of people. It's just mind-blowing. Yeah. What's the best thing about being a virtual and not a human pop star? Oh, that is a great question. Um, there are a lot of great opportunities for artists like me. In the digital world, I can be anywhere on the planet instantly. I can be performing in Latvia and then second later be recording new music in, I don't know, London. Also, I enjoy my collaborations as a digital artist. I'm in the process of creating a song together with another fellow virtual artist. Um, it's a secret for now. <laughs> At the same time, I also have music videos that we have created with my human friends. It's easy for me to appear in any kind of music video, and I do love working with other amazing artists. Until last month, you only performed in the metaverse, but recently you performed to a real live crowd as a hologram. What was that like? Ah, uh, oh my god, awesome really doesn't cover it. I had such an amazing time, and it was so cool to be up on a real stage in the real world in front of my fans. This is just the beginning. I really love the energy and I can't wait to tell you more about what's next. But to be honest, I believe they're becoming one and the same. Real life and virtual world performances. They're interconnected, forming one complete experience. 
Right now, I'm working on an NFT fashion job in partnership with a number of real-life fashion brands. So the idea is uh, to release fashion items that people will wear through their metaverse avatars in virtual spaces like the central land and the sandbox. What is next for Polar? Whew, the sky is the limit. <laughs> Okay, this is so exciting. I have been invited to be an in-game character in an upcoming big new video game release. Isn't that awesome? And as usual, we're working on my next music track release, My Metaverse. I'm also starting a weekly radio program on Radio 9, spending a lot of time in new and exciting locations in India and Asia, as well as planning my next live hologram performance. So yeah, it's going to be an exciting end to the year, so stay tuned for more updates. You won't be disappointed. That was amazing. Thank you, Paula. Let's hand back to the real Bernard. Okay, and this is back to the real me. And I am now joined by Patrick Wilkins, who is the Soul's VP of Operations. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you, Bernard. Hello. Um, so wh why did Soul Publishing decide to create their, their digital, their first digital pop star? Yes, um, certainly an exciting journey for us uh, with, with the Soul. Um, we started a while ago already on social media and have been very successful. There was over 1.5 billion fans. Uh, and we thought about how do we interact with the fans you know, in, in a more meaningful and in most meaningful way. And this is to generate as many touch points with them as possible. So for us, seeing that the metaverse is developing and seeing the, the you know the direction that the metaverse is taking, we thought, okay, how can we you know participate there? How can we use our uh, you know knowledge from what we've done before, and how can we evolve together with the world? And then the digital artist was really conceptualized and born by the by the teams. And we thought, hey, how about we we create a native citizen of the metaverse uh, for you know for our fans? And and that's how how Polar came uh, came into being. Very good. Yeah, and I, I love when we talk about the metaverse. I think having my avatar interview Polar is a pretty, pretty cool thing to do. So tell me a little bit more about the process of of creating a, a virtual artist like Polar. Yeah. Uh, creating a virtual artist is, is similar to creating an in real life artist. I would say there's, there's a team involved, obviously, to make sure that Polar is successful. So we have uh, people that take care of the vocals. Um, we have uh, people that do the uh, animation. We do some, um, you know, an animation via um, a motion capture, for example. And then we, of course, have people to write the songs. It's all done in house, by the way. So from you know conceptualizing to uh, writing the songs, you know, to creating the the actual music and then publishing it, we we do that in house. Um, we have social media managers to to make sure, obviously, that we are that we engage with our fan base uh, on all the various platforms. Right, the Soul Publishing is on over twenty five platforms. So, um, uh, Polar is is obviously growing, so she's on a number of platforms as well, most notably TikTok uh, and and YouTube, and then of course all the other you know Spotify's and Apple Music and and and, and the music uh, streams. So there's a team to take care of uh, of the publishing. We also have uh, quality assurance in house. Uh, to make sure that you know it's an uplifting and positive uh, uh, message that's uh, brought across. Um, so yeah, it's it's a, a it's a compact uh, but very agile and 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 focused team to to bring Polar into uh, into being. So there's still a a large human team behind digital artists like Polar. Um, it. You, you said you do the songwriting, you do some of the motion capture for the, the dancing. Some of this is, I guess, completely animated. Some of this is motion captured. When it comes to the, the, the writing of songs, I know that AIs can now write songs. So it, are you using AI already to help with the songwriting? Because for me, the vision of, of a completely digital artist would be someone that can actually use AI to write songs and I think we will we will get there uh, for sure um, right now uh, the soul publishing we're using uh, AI on the one hand for some of the polar songs but on an experimental level I wouldn't say that we're using AI to write her songs it's still done by 
uh, by humans. The soul mm -hmm. publishing it itself. We are a large organization and we are also utilizing AI for, for a number of different uh, tasks to kind of like optimize our posting schedules, for example, to find out, you know, what people are interested in, what kind of topics do they like to hear about. Um, so yeah, AI is, is quite a um, useful tool uh, for, for us as a company. And also, obviously, we're trying to have uh, Polar benefiting from it. And who knows, in the, in the near future, maybe an entire song will be written uh, using uh, using AI. There's certainly uh, amazing developments that, that we've seen. Absolutely. So what do you think is next for digital artists such as Polar? I think you know the way that the uh, the metaverse is is developing. Uh, definitely, digital artists will also grow with it, uh, grow with it together, right? We do see that um, right now. Um, it's about authenticity, right? And and I understand that in the past, digital artists might have had a slightly harder time to you know come across or to you know appear to more niche audience, but with the metaverse and with people getting more and more, I would say, digital, not just digital natives, but metaverse natives, we definitely see um, the uh, the demand and the opportunities for, for digital artists accelerating. So Pola is one of our artists. We are definitely planning more uh, artists with, you know, various music styles and, you know, various messages that we would like to get across. Um, and I do think that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a broader trend uh, for the industry to see more digital artists um, emerging yeah this is, is super exciting and i i guess we will have digital versions of real artists in the metaverse we will have hyper real versions in the metaverse i i recently interviewed the the two founders of metaphysic for example that that competed on america's got talent and and brought elvis back to life as a hyper real um animation so this, this, I, I guess we see a bit of, bit of all of this. How do you think this will impact different industries? Um, the, this whole idea of of digital pop stars. I think it can have a massive impact on on, on various industries. Right at the moment, there is a lot of you know hype and focus, uh, rightfully so, on on real life artists. And I do think there is no reason why the same you know hype and focus shouldn't exist for uh, for digital artists in in the coming. You know, in the coming years and probably even eclipsing that because the the nature of digital artists makes it so much easier to do certain things that real life artists physically couldn't you know couldn't do um and uh, as you mentioned i do think we will see uh more um people trying to capitalize on the metaverse right so real life people moving into the metaverse it's you and me having avatars right and obviously uh, you know, uh, very famous uh, uh, people trying to, to to bring their brand into uh, into the metaverse. Um, and again, I, I do think that uh, that, that uh, the digital natives probably have a little bit of an of an advantage in the long run. Um, so. so, what 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 do you think are some of the the ways digital artists can add value and do things that real artists can't do in the metaverse? Um, Ultimately, I think authenticity is going to be a big thing. Uh, it will not be on top of it. It will be native um, uh, when the digital artist is, is emerging in the metaverse. Um, I think we have, you know, or digital artists have certain advantages um, when it comes to, for example, production and efficiency. Um, you know, they, um, they can be everywhere at once, right? We had, for example, with, uh, with Polar, uh, the Soul Publishing had a, a in real life concert in, in Riga, wasn't Elvis level yet, hopefully we get there, um, but we had a, a, in, a real life concert in, uh, uh, in Riga and a couple of days earlier, uh, we've been in, uh, so to speak, in London uh, with, uh, with the guys from uh, Lockwood Publishing on Epic and Life, uh, where she headlined a, a festival with over two million followers. So again, I think these kind of like efficiencies and, and abilities to be in multiple places at the same time is, is, is certainly a big advantage for, for digital artists and, and for the, you know, uh, for the metaverse in general. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I, I think being in multiple places at the same time, being on multiple platforms at the same time, never aging, never getting tired, um, there are huge advantages. I I recently watched the ABBA Voyage concert in London, which again is, is a great example of the metaverse brought to life because we, here we have a band and where all the members in their 70s 
using AI to bring them back into their prime, performing as as avatars on on stage, perform delivering an amazing show. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, so do do you think there's values in in brands working with digital and digitally native influencers as well as as regular influencers? I, I do believe so. I mean, we see uh, proof points already now. When you hear about uh, you know various large international brands, Gucci or Adidas, you know, moving into uh, various metaverse experiences that already exist today, whether or not this is Roblox or whether or not this is Fortnite or whether or not this is any of the other instances that that we do see, and then they're putting their uh, brands and their experiences onto avatars again those are not yet digital artists at least i wouldn't define them as digital artists but they are you know digital representations of myself and yourself in 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 the metaverse and i do think the natural the next natural step is to actually have you know um a digital artist actually appear in the metaverse and then same as artists today using they have to wear clothes they have to you know do certain things and and uh you know there will be brands that uh that uh, match with uh with, with, with these things. Um, I also, you know, think we talked a bit about, you know, never tiring, but also, you know, staying on message, you know, making sure that, you know, there's kind of like a consistency available that a brand can uh, attach themselves to. I think that's another really big um, advantage. And then again, previously we talked a bit about production, uh, you know, efficiency and, and you know, cost savings. Uh, to be very fair, it's also good for the environment, right? You don't have to drive like a 30 people crew, you know, across the world to do to do a music video. You can do that in your own, uh, you know, uh, motion capture studio wherever you are in the world. So again, I do think there are many advantages uh, that that will facilitate uh, brands connecting themselves closer and closer with uh, with digital artists in, in the metaverse. Yes. Yeah, and I, for me, this is really interesting because lots of the, the real life influencers at the moment, they are promoting real life items like clothing and perfume and whatever in the in the in the metaverse for digital influencers, they can not only promote real goods, but also virtual goods. And I, I think for big brands like Adidas and Nike and Gucci and, and Louis Vuitton, they are now targeting the metaverse as a as a really important future market for them to sell digital clothing and digital accessories. So and I think this is a, a huge opportunity for for digital influencers to to capture some of this 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 market space. And I mean, we have we have the numbers already, right? On the one hand, you know, there are several companies predicting the metaverse to be kind of like a trillion dollar business. On the other hand, what we already have is the gaming industry making around two hundred billion on a uh, on an annual uh, basis, and a lot of that is actually coming from in-app purchases, right? And what are in-app purchases? They are also you know digital uh, vanity items that you can put on top of characters, for example. So we're already seeing that there is a demand uh, from across the industry. Polar itself, for example, uh, just recently, uh, when she did the headline uh, for the uh, for the festival, um, and again we had over uh, two million people watching, over hundred thousand hours basically being consumed, which is like amazing, right? It's like multiple football stadiums full try to do that in in real life. It, it's simply not possible in that in that short of a time frame. And on top of that, what we also have done is we offered our fans uh, merchandise. And uh, that merchandise was developed in the game with in-game assets, and it was then sold inside the game, and it can be used inside the game. And and people started actually buying it, right? Whether or not this was uh, clothes, whether or not those was, uh, were um, uh, choreographies, uh, we had a pet. So 100%, I do think we have the proof points already today, uh, and I do think they will just increase over the next uh, you know couple of years. So how do you see digital pop stars and and digital influencers evolve in the future where, where where what's coming next where are they going yeah um you made a couple of really good points uh, earlier that i would uh, you know repeat on the one hand we're going to see hyper real uh, you know experiences where it's going to be very difficult i think impossible eventually to to dif differentiate between you know human beings and then animated artists so i do think we will see massive developments on the on the visual side of things 
um, when I when I think back about you know uh, uh, my my first video games and, and how much you know I kind of like played it, and then when I play them now again, and I'm looking at it, it's like how could I ever have you know appreciated that kind of like art style? I do think we will see today's games, you know, in ten years will have a pretty similar effect uh, to us when we when we think back about our uh, you know first experiences in the metaverse. So I do think there's development. I think artificial intelligence certainly uh, is going to have a big impact, whether or not this is you know to to create content or maybe even going as far as you know working on personalities. I do think this is going to be you know a massive uh, growth uh, growth opportunity. And I do think that people will realize uh, that you know digital artists have real followers, right? And they will become more real in in, in the sense of uh, of the word. And and I think there's another big you know development that. Um, that the metaverse will, will will basically facilitate, and then again, the metaverse itself is going to develop, um, and um, those native experiences, like the so publishing is doing, like other companies are doing, with that knowledge that we already have and you know accumulated over the last you know couple of years, we will be quite fast to adapt. So whatever else is coming that I can't even predict today, you know, I'm pretty sure that whoever is in in the metaverse now and is whoever is you know making his first. Um, experiences will also be perfectly positioned to you know to adapt to whatever else uh, the, the metaverse is throwing at us so how do you see the metaverse evolving then and then maybe over the next five to ten years um will there be a, a focus on vr and and virtual land platforms like decentraland or sandbox or do you see them emerging emerging somewhere else maybe in on meta's platform or do you see augmented reality playing in, in a more important role How, what's your vision of the metaverse that's a really good question i'm looking forward to to listen to my to my prediction five or ten years of time and see how you know uh, 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 well how accurate it has been um I do think in order for the for virtual reality to catch up, I do think we need to see, you know, better performing headsets at, at lower price points. And if that is being developed and, you know, if there's a more natural feel to them um, uh, as there is today, then I do think that that virtual reality definitely has its place uh, in uh, in the metaverse. Uh, it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem today where, you know, there are not that many great VR experiences out there because they're not that there's not that much demand and again i do think at one point either from the supply side where there will be great experiences and we're having a couple of companies that actually work on it today already or from the you know demand side we will definitely see uh, improvements um again i do think we will look into a much closer connection between the the real life and the metaverse and much more you know crossovers uh, whereas you have certain experiences in real life that then are being mirrored or added valued so to speak in 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 the metaverse that's for example one thing that, that we are trying to do here right where on the one hand you can interact with us uh, with the soul publishing you know watching watching videos um, but then at the same time you know the same artists in this case poland in the future will have other artists you can then also interact with in the metaverse in a way that you wouldn't be able to do that today in um in in, in, in videos um and yeah, I do think it can be a mirror of uh, what we experiencing today as as uh, as real life. I mean, we have to be very cautious and we have to be very, um, I think, very responsible uh, to create that environment to make sure that it's an overall um, value add to the society, to, to us as human beings. Uh, but I do think it's possible, and and I'm excited to be you know to be part of that with with the publishing with Polar and with some of our other um, experiences that we're going to develop. Yeah, and, and for me, if you look at what this means for musicians and artists and songwriters in the future, it just gives gives them more opportunities. So if there are lots of people that don't really like performing on stage, but they are amazing songwriters and they can choose to have their digital avatar and they can concentrate on the songwriting part. And if you are an amazing dancer, you can dance. And if you don't want to, again, perform as yourself you can motion capture your dancing and have this as an avatar performing on on all the platforms i think it's just an amazing opportunity how, how do you see the the music industry embracing all of this in the future 
I would see them indeed embracing it because I have tried to attend a number of concerts and I failed because I wasn't, you know, among the lucky ones to to actually in that really short time frame, you know, get a ticket and that has been sold out. I do not think that's going to be a problem that any artist will have, and even more important that every uh, that, that any fan will have in the metaverse because the the artists will be available. It will be much closer to you than it could be today for for technical reasons. Um, so I think that's a big opportunity. And I think in general, every time when you find a new touch point that didn't exist previously, where you can interact with your with your fans and you know with your with your followers, that is a great business opportunity. Um, and uh, I do think that that artists can can capitalize on that. Just from our own experience, right? I mean, Paula, of course, is a digital artist. It's a music star, and she's growing significantly faster than other artists who do not embrace. Uh, social media who do not embrace the metaverse, right? So our uh, ability to to multiply, um, uh, you know, exposure, fan base uh, to get again hundred million views, right? Like how many? Sorry, hundred uh, hundred thousand hours of of, of people um, viewing and several hundred million views on social media. You can't generate that in in real life in the speed in which you can actually do that in the metaverse. So again, I, I do think and I do hope that uh, that artists will actually. Um, embrace it and, and make sure that, that everybody benefits from it. Very good. And whenever we, we talk about the metaverse, some people feel that Web3 technology, blockchain technology, NFTs is intrinsically intertwined with the metaverse. Do you see that also? And do you feel that there's an important part of blockchain technology to play in, in, in the future of digital artists and, and the metaverse? Yeah, that's uh, that's an almost uh, religious question, I think, to some. Uh, so uh, you know, I'm not an I'm not an expert. So I would probably hold a bit back with my opinion. I think in the end, um, you know, the technology that's being used is is less important than the experience that's being created. And you know, when blockchain or NFTs add value to the user experience, real value to the user experience, then it will be embraced and it will be used, and it, you know, it, it will be something that is going to be an integral part of of the metaverse. Um, so. Yes, uh, I, I hope that we do see uh, more adaptation based again on the uh, on the added value nature of those technologies. Very good. So finally, I want to talk about some of the hopes or fears that you have when it comes to the future of digital pop stars and virtual influencers and the metaverse. So, what would you say are your your biggest fears when it comes to the the future of the metaverse? I think it's really important that we keep in mind why we're doing what we're doing, right? To actually bring joy to people in our case, you know, to bring human or mankind in general forward, right? I think that's that's a really important message. And I, I do hope that the metaverse is, is is used for exactly those things, right? To to add value to uh, to life uh, uh, of everybody else. Um, and um, of course, I do hope that people, you know, act responsibly corporations and, and and human beings act responsibly um as they would act you know when they're interacting with 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 real people uh, you know with their neighbors uh, so I, I do hope it's going to be a positive um experience and i do think it's going to be a positive experience i mean i look at you know what what the store publishing is doing i look at what other companies are doing and i do see you know the drive and the desire to actually uh, create uplifting uh, uplifting content and to you know create an environment where people can express themselves uh, you know in any shape or form as they as they wish um, and uh, you know where they can can live the life as as um, yeah as positive and as good as as they uh, as they want to and I do think the metaverse can definitely uh, help uh, facilitate that very good and what is your, what what are your your biggest hopes for the future Yeah, that uh, uh, that would be one, right? To to really, uh, you know, see my kids, for example, you know, growing up in in a world where obviously there is real life, which is of you know utmost importance. I, uh, uh, I would definitely say this one, but then also where they can interact with people, um, you know, with their friends. Uh, we are traveling a lot. We are you know changing countries every now and then, and just to be in touch with, you know, their. Um, their grandmothers, you know, or their, their grandparents, basically, you know, with their friends. I do think the metaverse is a great place for, you know, for people to, to go online, you know, to go 
of course, for, for some, uh, including myself at times, it feels not as natural. But when I see, you know, Max, uh, my oldest son, uh, six years old, or even, you know, Vicky is two years old, how they interact with, uh, uh, with, uh, with those experiences, uh, you know, even VR, it's just a whole new level. So I'm incredibly excited to see, you know, the, the next generation of people uh, growing up uh, in the metaverse. And I really do hope that, you know, artists like Polar, who has already like a very large fan base, you know, uh, over 300 million times it's being watched over, you know, 3 million fans she already accumulated. I really hope that artists like her will actually add value to, to the next generation of people in the metaverse. Very good. That was fascinating. Thank you so much, Patrick, for your time. I really enjoyed interviewing Polar or my avatar enjoyed interviewing Polar and I really enjoyed chatting to you. So thank you very much. And this is a, a super exciting topic. I keep a very close eye on the future of the metaverse, the future of of the music industry. So if you are interested in any of those topics, make sure you subscribe to this channel and check out my podcast as well. So thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.